thanks so much for staying there once again. The newspapers are ready. My guests are seated. Uh, but first, let's take a look at what's on the front pages. The finder says, TUC backs ADB NIB restructuring calls for salary increases for public sector workers. Uh, that's the big one. Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire lift suspension on 2020-2021 cocoa sales. So we're not going to sell. Government to implement plan of action for journalist safety. And that story of LPG in central region uh, gets uh, some ink here. Daily Guide, 12 trapped in Kalamse pit. Um, photograph here and IMF stinks Mahama on free f uh, on free fall spending as well as NDC tension escalates. The Ghanaian Times this morning says that TUC cautions government. It says ensure Ghana never returns to IMF program and JEA Mills lecture held in Accra. Uh, the cocoa story also gets a uh, front page on the Times. The BNFT says budget overrun likely economic intelligence unit warns predicts 5.5% end-year deficit. That's the big one. And reduce taxes on LPG to increase usage. Daily graphic says low fish catch. Sellers tend to cold stores. Ajay refute architect's allegation, says firm is doing legitimate business. And first district scholarship scheme launched in second year. That's in the Western region. My guest to do the talk is a member of the NPP team, Nana Damo. Nana, good morning. Yeah. Hope you're doing great. By the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Dr. Michael Pesa White is a member of the NDC, uh, attempting to represent the Shai Usudoku uh, constituency. Good morning. Good Hope morning. you're doing great. I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, grateful for your time. Mm -hmm. Let, let's start with a story from uh, the Daily Graphic. If you take a look at page 16, the involvement of the renowned international uh, architectural firm David Ajay and Associates, the design and construction of some landmark projects in the country is raising some concerns within the architectural industry. That's the daily graphic. It says that while a Ghanaian architectural firm, Design Associate Development Consortium, is protesting the alleged award of a number of national projects to David Ajay and Associates, the latter has refuted the allegation, saying it is doing legitimate business in the country and has not infringed any laws. According to David Ajay and Associates, it was never true that absolute disregard and non-adherence to the principles of transparency, fairness and equity had played up in the award of projects to the firm. According to the firm, it was in the country to do legitimate business and play to the rules of engagement and operations governing the procurement of professional services by state uh, bodies. Uh, the petition uh, to the president uh, wanted the president, or is asking the president, to take a look at the number of projects awarded to the uh, said David Ajayene Associates. Now, uh, if you go on, Daily Graphic says it took steps to look into the matter and visited the offices of David Ajayene and Associates in Accra as well as the head office of the GRE, and found documents that pointed to the company's legitimacy to execute projects in the country. According to the documents, Sir David Ajayi was registered in Ghana as a practicing architect. He's a member of the Ghana Institute of Architects, and his firm was registered with the correct governing body. Daily Graphic also goes on to say that it checked some of the projects. So, uh, for instance, uh, if you continue to pick 20 um, some of the projects for instance the Bank of Ghana um, project daily graphic says that David Ajayi uh, his services were procured in compliance with the procurement uh, authority act it says that the uh, of the opinions palace uh, that contract daily graphic says it cannot confirm it's been awarded to um, they said David Ajayi and Associates. However, the Railways uh, Development Ministry uh, has also awarded another to David Ajayi. Uh, the Energy City, that's the Airport City 2 Master Plan Project, is also awarded to him. So, some of the 12 projects, Daily Graphics says, uh, can, he ca it cannot confirm, have been awarded to the said um, David Ajayi and Associates. Now, now, let me come to you. Now, it, the, the, the procurement minister has said that the uh the president will look into this now 
What should we be looking out for? The competence of a person or the fact that according to the Architects Institute of Ghana, he is not a registered member, even though daily graphic stories suggest that the man is registered. Thank you very much, Bright. Um, good morning to you. Good morning to your, your viewers as well. Um, I think that this presents us with a complex of issues that we need to take our time to look into one by one. But the very, very first one, if you don't mind handing me... The Daily Graphic. Super. Yes. Okay. Right. The very first one that I'm concerned about is that we've had quite a number of allegations that have made the rounds extensive. Right. It would just suggest that uh, something is being done on this... Uh, okay, don't, don't put the, the, the newspaper on your microphone. Okay. Thank you. Now, so I would want to just do us, us a favor and then look at it all over again. And if you look at it carefully, mm. you'd realize that the graphic says that they did checks. And I want to read a portion of it so that everybody can understand where, where we are going to. Now, the checks that Daily Graphic did confirms that indeed there's no such project as the of a repaying fee being... Right, uh, it's not been awarded to him. No, it's not that it's not been re... re um, Awarded. The source of the palace said David Ajay and Associate had no transaction with the for a paying fee, and the palace had no intention of building or redesigning the palace. Okay. So that project in itself does not exist. Okay. So as to how it made it in, onto a list that has extensively been circulated is a problem. It says here too that for GMPC, it also came to light that the architects had submitted proposals to the board of GMPC to design its current the head offices mm. and had received no contract to that effect. Um, it also goes on to say that, uh, among other things, the International Children's Cancer Hospital uh, was not a government project, but a direct commission by a private U.S.-based charity given to David Ajay and Co. And so what you find in this story is that the list that has extensively made around is not truthful, if I may say. According to the Daily Graphic. Well, yes, and the Daily Graphic says that they have done their checks. Uh, unless anybody is going to give me a reason to doubt what the daily graphic is saying. That's what I'll go with. Mm. And I'm saying that we need to be a bit more careful as to how we go with things. This year, the year 2019, we've branded it as a year of the return. What we are seeking to do is to get experts, Ghanaians who are outside, who have been living in the diaspora, who are you know persons who even have uh, lineage to Ghana, to come into this country mm. and help us with our developmental effort. This is in recognition of the president's uh, knowledge that or the wisdom of the president's idea that listen it takes people to develop a country we have done our bit to develop our people and we are continuing to do our bit but if we can get some of these people to also come in and help us with our agenda in terms of even their return will come with foreign direct investments will come with inflows will come with a lot of expertise among others all part of our effort we need to be a bit more careful mm -hmm. in how we deal with matters such as this this is not to say that if anybody is seen to be engaging in illegal activities just because he's a foreigner or he's an ex expert of a sort he should be allowed to you know perpetuate such such illegal actions however i believe on the basis of what we have heard so far that perhaps we need to exercise a bit more discretion in how we rush to the media with some of these concerns as well what is imperative now is that i believe design associates need to come back again and tell us where they got they their got information, information from and then we can have a, a, a broader perspective but it is also worth noting that the president in line with his mantra of trying to investigate all of these things even though these were just allegations contained in a petition mm. he has come out to say that he will investigate it it is interesting because even before that investigation comes out to say anything or finds anything this daily graphic checks also put into context um, some of the things that are there per creating the basis that perhaps not all of the allegations made in the petition may be true. Let's see where it gets. So I have utmost confidence in that. I believe it is the Minister of State responsible for procurement mm. who spoke on behalf of the presidency right. that investigations will be conducted into it. What we know is that the president has set up that office to ensure that infractions regarding procurement that have become a bane of corruption in, in this country of ours, where if you do a check on any ordinary day, you find out that about 80% of, of corruption related cases has to do with procurement mm. um this office has been set up to ensure that there is oversight and and, and policy uh, supervision as regards the procurement processes so allegations have come up they've come out to tell us that it will be investigated mm. we thank god we're also happy that um independent journalism 
or independent journalists uh, have done their checks and have realized that not all of the allegations may be true. We'll wait and see what it is. But I believe strongly that design associates will do this country a lot of good mm. if they are to come out and tell us exactly where they got um, that information those, from. That if it is true, provide evidence to the effect. If they realize that mistakes have been made as well, admit it and then let's move on as a country. Should, for instance, should anyone be asking that the Minister of State in charge of procurement suggesting that she will get the president to investigate, should she not have enough information on this? Um... I believe that we need to understand the roles that are played by various state agencies. Mm -hmm. Now, at the ministerial level, what you're responsible for is policy formulation and implementation and supervision of the agencies. It is the agencies themselves that, so in, 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 this, in this regard, I'm not very sure of the relationship between that. I would think that the PPA may be an agency of, of the ministry. Of, they work under the ministry. Yes, they work under their supervision. So in this regard, the PPA would have all the facts. But I believe that the the... the Stance taken by the minister responsible for procurement is the best. She did not that the come president should do the investigation. No, not that the president or, should or do the investigation. Unless it's the presidency. What you need to understand is that that ministry is created under the office of the president. Right. So it is not that the president himself is going to conduct mm -hmm. the investigation. But once the office has been created under the office of the president, if she says that the presidency will investigate, it may even be it her office that, ministry itself. that that will do that. But it is it's put in proper context again. That's the best thing to do. Do not rubbish the allegations outright so that uh, you give political opponents the chance to say that uh, it has become a clearinghouse and we don't even look into investigations among that. At least, no matter what it is, mm. she has come out clearly to say that, we, yes, the petition has been received and it will be looked into. And I'm saying, I'm grateful that even before that investigation comes any, goes anywhere, mm. we are also getting another side of it that says that perhaps not all of the allegations contained therein may be true. It is very critical at this stage for design associates to also come out and mm. tell us where they got it from so we can have a certain perspective as that investigation continues. But I don't think that Sarah Adras Safonabo did anything wrong in what she did. That is what any minister that is minded to do her job as a public servant in the interest of the people of Ghana should mm. do. Grateful. Dr. Mr. White, so this is where we are. There is a there is a promise of investigations. Daily Graphic says it has done some checks. Uh, certain projects uh, that were said to have been awarded, uh, they said David Ajay and Associates, and uh, correctly the, the, the exact situation. But in this complex situation, how do we disentangle bits and pieces of information and get to the bottom of it? Well, thank you very much, and uh, good morning to our cherished viewers. Uh, I think that uh, there are fundamental issues at stake in this, this particular story. Mm. And the first one it has to do with the issue of procurement. So if you even put the Ajay a little bit aside for a moment, okay. the fundamental issue is, is the pr procurement regime in Ghana presently working well and working in the best interest of Ghana? And this question is relevant for two reasons. One is that prior to the 2016 uh, elections, mm. one of the key issues that was raised severally by the NPP, then in opposition, was the fact that there were procurement infractions. They talk about sole sourcing, they talk about all manner of things. And so one would have expected that having um, raised this issue and given the mandate, this will be the very last government about which issues and matters of procurement infractions will arise. But that is not to be, and, and I think that is fundamental. Secondly, this is also a government that had taken the step in the very early years to set up a ministry of procurement located within the presidency. Never mind the fact that we have the procurement agency that has been doing very fine for a very long period of time. And so, fundamentally, we have a problem. Now, the issue relating to uh, David Ajayi is of interest for many reasons. Why is it that it is David Ajayi whose name or whose firm is being, I mean, circulated as um, being awarded several contracts by the government? And this is a question I believe government will have to uh, deal with or answer. Daily graphic story is just one of the many versions of the, of the stories that are out there. 
And whilst there may be some credibility to their checks, I believe that there are some credibilities also to those other versions that uh, are circulating out there. And this is so because I don't think that the Ghana Institute of Architects would be in the game of mischief just to issue a statement and petition the president for the purposes of, of what? It is true that we want to do what? Encourage Ghanaians abroad to come home. But that doesn't mean that we should push Ghanaians in the country who have the same expertise out of the door. We need a certain synergy in terms of the skills. And so it raises, concern, it raises fundamental concerns about whether we are being told the truth. Mm. If you recall, several major projects, when this story started circulating, several major projects, including the cathedral, the, 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 the chamber, the parliament house, or the proposed parliament house, and a whole number of them were linked to this particular firm. The Ghana Institute of uh, Architects are saying that this firm is not even registered yet, as far as they are concerned. We are told by the Daily Graphic story that they have checked and it has been registered. So there is a need for some finality. Indeed, it is not enough for the firm to simply be saying that we are doing legitimate business. We have reached a point where you just need to put your documents in the open and say, look, we are actually in legitimate business and here is the evidence to support it. Mm. Daily Graphic had written the story. There is another version of the story. But where is the evidence? I think that the onus lies on the one claiming that is doing legitimate business to actually put the evidence out there. And unless and until we do, we do that, mm. it appears to me that there is a certain cabal colluding around procurement and looting the state resources for whatever it is worth. And I think that we need to take that very seriously. Mm. The, the call to get it investigated, the, the Minister of State in charge of procurement says that, right, so we have received a petition from both uh, the designer uh, consortium and then the Institute of Architect. The president is going to uh, take a look at it. It should settle everything, I guess. Well, I think that should settle everything. But I, I, I have actually have a fundamental problem with that. I mean, is the minister a conveyor belt? The minister, his office or her office, should be able to investigate it. Should this be something that should be investigated by the president? Nana explained that since that ministry is under the presidency, uh, she could mean her ministry doing the investigations when she said the president... Why couldn't she speak in simple English? That my ministry will carry out the investigation and put the facts. Why do you want to say the president will investigate it? Has the president any interest in David Ajayi and in this matter as a whole? Why do you link the president to this? The minister must investigate it and submit the report to the president. That is how proper governance systems work. If the president investigates, what happens thereafter? So I think that perhaps, and I want to grant the minister a certain uh, latitude of credibility that perhaps the framing of the story did not uh, bring out her intentions well. But if the idea is that, okay, the president will look into it, then really we are joking. I mean, there are issues of potential or alleged procurement infractions. And there is a ministry responsible for procurement. And one would have expected that that ministry would have taken the bull by the horn mm. and clear whatever misconceptions, if there are, out there. But to say that the, you, you, you convey the petitions to the president to investigate presupposes that this is an issue that is over and above you. That then raises the question of who are the invisible hands, uh, hands behind the scene that makes the minister tremble, the reason for which she cannot herself investigate this story. Right. Okay. Now, I want a reaction. Yes, I think that there are some fundamental issues here that we need to address as well. Um, Mr. Uh, I'm for you. He's done very well, I'm sorry, by... You don't know my name. No, I know your but name, but... I, I, it's, Dr. It's, Pesa White. Dr. That's Pesa White, I'm sorry. Dr. Pesa White has um, done very well in seeking to raise questions about the credibility of the process and the credibility of the minister, among others. But I think that all of these issues can be dealt with very simply. There's no confusion anyway. And if there's any confusion, I like the fact that he pre-qualified all of what he was saying that it appears to him. Because in actual fact, that's not the reality. This is what, why. The petition was presented to the president and not to the minister. Mm. The petition is addressed to the president. Mm. So if you have addressed a petition to the president, and I am a minister, yes, it will come to me. Mm. But he addressed it to the president. So if I have done anything at all, I would have to submit it to the president. You wanted the intervention of the president. Mm. That is why he decided to present it to the president. I work under him. So I've said, okay, I've taken it on his behalf. He will cause an investigation to be done. There's nothing wrong with that. There are no unseen hands anywhere. Mm. There's nothing shady in this. Let us not seek to create a story. 
that does not exist basically because a minister has done what is right right we are three on the set if someone decides to present a petition to your boss instead of yourself for what i have said i do not think that it is up to you to get up and say you will do anything because the person ignored you and decided to go all the way to your boss that's exactly what is happening secondly it needs to be clear that the ghana institute of architects has not said that the firm is not registered in fact the petition that has been presented mm. was presented by design associates and putting it in the rightful context design associates is quote and unquote a competitor of mr david Dajai. they have made the allegations independent checks have said that not all of the allegations are founded mm. now a petition has been presented and i have said here on this set that now that this independent checks are questioning the, the the credibility of some of the allegations that have been made it behoves on them to also come out and tell us where they got the information from for example if it is said that some of the projects they are alleging hmm, do not even exist at all that's a serious issue for me projects that are non-existent have come up in an allegation secondly some of these things that they have listed as government projects are not government projects so for example look it raises a fundamental issue for me that when they say that for repaining theory design was being done as a government project what does that mean that state funds were being used to redesign or for repaying fee and the contract had been awarded to mr david ajay and his company now that beyond this issue that we are discussing raises several other questions that we have to look into gratefully and thankfully the truth has come to bear that that does not exist so again it goes back to the point of an allegation has been made mm. independent checks have brought up a different set of facts now we need the the origin of that allegation to come out and clear the air in the meantime it is true that allegations were made regarding um procurement infractions and, and other things and a petition has been presented to the president and it has been said that the president will cause an investigation and a report will be, will be given on this matter i do not see why we are now trying to say that um it appears that there are invisible hands and and there, there are people behind the scenes colluding and conniving among others again this issue of procurement that uh, doctor sought to raise that there is uh, this government sought to say that procurement is a big problem and when we came uh, procurement is still continuing to be a big problem it's instructive to note that he didn't give any evidence to that he just created a narrative around it it's instructive sorry, to sorry, say. Sorry. I, I, I'll, sorry, come I'll come to you i'll come to you please note it down i'll come Good. to you now what i would like to see is that and i'm waiting for the statistics on these to give up hmm. but what you realize is that the aberration what was supposed to be the exception of sole sourcing which became the norm under the previous government is no longer the case so sourcing is no longer the case i'm saying that what was supposed to be mm. an exception became the norm it wasn't the norm oh what uh, is the, the statistics the, 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 i'm coming to you he he's also raising statistics so i'll come to you too for your reaction nana please go thank you the discussion at that point was that yes we have written for ourselves a procurement process and a procurement law and there is an exception or exceptional circumstances have been created because sometimes due to some specific uh, difficulties that may exist mm. we feel that some individuals or some companies should be so sourced for specific projects that became the norm that became the norm and the government of the day then or the opposition of the day then was raising questions about that let us not therefore seek to say that the government or the uh, the government now which was the opposition then sought to say that so sourcing was illegal because the facts of the matter are that sole sourcing mm. is part of the law. And if anyone had said that sole sourcing was illegal and the government of the day did not deem it a critical fact to come out and explain that no, sole sourcing is a part of the law, then that is a failure on their part. W was that an a, a, a argument based on statistics? That sole sourcing was a It no? was based on statistics. Okay. And as I've said, I've requested for it and I'm hoping okay. that I'll get a response right. very soon. Okay. But as I am saying, if the government of the day then failed to get out there and explain to the people of Ghana mm. that soul sourcing is part of the law, then that is one of the many monumental failures that they had. That wasn't the argument. The argument was 
that soul sourcing is supposed to be the exception. Mm. But today, it has become the norm. It has replaced the ordinary process okay. that was supposed to ensure that we had competitiveness, to, uh, competitiveness in the scheme that would lead to the most competitive getting all of these things. You would also want to keep in mind that in my sector, which is the energy sector, we have even taken it a step further by ensuring that oil uh, blocks are allocated on a competitive basis. This government is actually taking all steps to ensure that we open up a lot more because wherever there is sunshine, wherever there is sunshine, mm. there's a lot more uh, transparency and it is a lot more difficult to engage in acts of corruption. Let, let me, before uh, Dr. White come in, uh, the Daily Graphic story suggests that it, it, the reporter went to GRE and found out that um, David Ajay and Associates is doing legitimate business. Yes. Now, the architects are suggesting that the man put in a request to be registered Sorry. in 2018, and as of uh, Wednesday, today is Friday, as of Wednesday, that the processes that uh, David Ajay and Associates would need to go through to get properly licensed, the processes have not been completed. May I? So those are the two, the two uh, uh, complex issues. Yeah. Uh, can doc, I'll come to you briefly. No, Doc, I'll come to you briefly. Now it says, so, according to the document, Sir David Ajay was registered in Ghana as mm. a practicing architect and is a member of the Ghana Institute of Architects. Great. And his firm was registered with the correct governing body. Okay, so that's a daily graphic story. But the architects are suggesting, or they're saying that, mm. he put in his document on the 18th of April, 2018, as of when this story broke out, he's not finished the processes to get him a license to operate. Listen, my understanding is that they have put him, he's on the list of registered. Okay. And I'll repeat what is written here. According to the documents, Sir David Ajay was registered in Ghana as a practicing architect and is a member of the Ghana Institute of Architects. Mm. Now, if this is not true, mm. then we expect them to come out and challenge that indeed this is not true. But okay, they have said it then, already. Until then, mm. I do not think that we should engage in conjecture and all of these things. It's harmful okay. well, to ourselves. I, I, well, the architects said it themselves, the so it is, not, it is not C. conjecturing. Right. They so, say they so put in his request on 18th April 2018, and as of when this story broke, the processes have not been completed. So, so, he so, didn't have have even, so have they even okay. placed them on a temporary list? I, 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 I don't have that information. I have that information. Would, okay. And that enables him to mm. engage to in engage business in, in okay. Ghana. So I, I'm let, us not, let us not seek to... And again, no, 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 I, no, I no, no it's okay. I think you have, you have cleared uh, your, your uh, point. Uh, 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 I'll come back to you if you I need think there is a need like for, Dr. Kamen. Yeah, there is a need for balance in terms of how much time is allocated to each You go on. Please go on. Let me just say that this explanation that all of a sudden... MPP recognizes that soul sourcing is, an, is only an exception and it's not a crime. It's new. Because in opposition, they bastardized everything soul sourcing. They made it look like it is a crime. Even the vice president now, then the, the, the candidates, uh, the running mates to, to Nanado, virtually made it one of the major themes of his series of lectures that he was delivering. Although most of those lectures were factually inaccurate, they were able to get Ghanaians into believing that indeed this was the case. Where are we today? We have a government that claims that sole sourcing was bad, appointed a minister for procurement, and has in itself engaged actively in sole sourcing, and now turns around and says, oh, well, it is one of the incompetencies of the previous government uh, not to be able to explain to Ghanaians that this was only an exception. Since when did they recognize that it was only an exception and not the norm? And what is the ratio? What ratio are we talking about here? What is the ratio of projects that were executed on the basis of competitive bidding and projects that were executed, executed on the basis of sole sourcing? And if they indeed were executed on the basis of sole sourcing, what was the rationale in the letters written to the PPA before approving those projects? And I believe that when we make these facts clear, you will realize that, yes, there may have been sole sourcing, but in the end, in the lure to the benefit of the state, because sole sourcing does not necessarily mean that you are colluding or looting the state. What we are saying is that, look, all of a sudden, there are several projects that have been proposed that have been paraded around. We have several architects in Ghana, training Ghana, training, doing fantastic work. But one major firm that apparently is new, and its legitimacy in the country is in question, appears to be the only one that is getting all these projects or that 
more or less is alleged to be getting these projects. So it raises a fundamental question that are all the other ones that have existed for years, mm. that have been doing legitimate business in this country for several years, are they all, all of a sudden not good enough to get any projects? And I think this is where the issue is. And to try and rubbish the, pet the petition written by, I mean, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, design design as a consultant. It's, 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 it's he's, he's only asking that they should come in and, and perhaps give out more document as to the denial being uh, uh, written by the Daily Graph that cert certain projects were not indeed or have not indeed been awarded to the Vida Giant Associates. Well, the, well, of course, I'm sure that uh, the Design Associates will come out mm. eventually since th this is the, the source of the story. Right. But fundamentally, are these projects on the radar of government? Some of them. Have procurement begun? And if procurement have begun, who, which or who are the companies that have bidded? And which company have been shortlisted or are in the front line of winning this? These, I believe, government communicators need to tell us to clear the matter. Okay, now. This, me. I believe, needs to be made clear to Ghanaians that look, it is not true that the Vidajai is getting this project or getting that project. But as we sit, the confusion is not cleared. We continue to talk around the confusion. Nobody has denied anything, and nobody has fully accepted anything. And I think that is the crux of the matter. Particularly so that procurement was a fundamental issue of conversation, the reason for which a minister at the presidency exists. I don't expect that will be where we are today. I expect that we will have better clarity than we currently have. OK, let me yeah. do the BNFT. Yeah. Now, now, let's move on. Let's move on. We are getting to the top of the year. The BNFT is talking about budget overrun likely. Uh, that's uh, a warning from the Economic Intelligence Unit. Uh, it is predicting a 5.5% NER deficit. It says that despite enacting the fiscal responsibility law that places limits on how much government must spend, the Economic uh, Intelligence Unit is predicting that government will sidestep the law in order to deliver on its campaign promises. The fiscal responsibility law, which was passed in 2018, seeks to limit budget deficit to a maximum 5% of GDP. But the EIU, in its country report for July, says government may miss it by 0.5 percentage points in 2020, the election year due to rising expenditure. The NPP government made a lot of ambitious promises in the run-up to the December 2016 election, including a uh, free senior high school, one district, one factory, one village, one dam, one million for each constituency, and other infrastructural projects, all of which must be delivered before the country goes to the polls in December next year if the government party, uh, the governing party is to retain power. And it is against these expenditures that EIU is predicting that government will spend more, thereby hitting a budget deficit of 5.5%. Now, now, let me again start this conversation. One of the key issues, or one of the key issues raised when this fiscal responsibility law was passed was that, well, it didn't, it didn't give any sanction. And so a, a government can flout the law and nothing happens. And EIU is saying that this is possible. Um, I, I think that... First of all, I would want to take a bit of this time to clarify a couple of things. Number one, okay, it's your own statistics. Time, so you statistics indicates that the procurement authority saved Ghana about 1.9 billion in 21 months. This story was published on. This public story was published on the Daily Graphic Online on okay. April 3rd, 2019, and it says that the Public Procurement Authority has saved the country a total of 1.9 billion between April 2017 and December 2018 as a result of adherence to due diligence in public procurement. Now, this is there; it is clear. So, you requested for statistics. No, no, I have no, some. No, no, okay, no, okay no, so no, Daily no, Graphic, no, 1.9 no, no, billion, no, no, April 2017 no, no. to 2018. We don't need to deceive our public. If Daily Graf Graphic publishes a story and say PPA has saved the country in relation to what? Okay. Um, no, no, I don't have the story, in, but in, 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 in relation to what? Here, what is here. the baseline? What are they comparing it to? I have it here. Procurement. Okay. Okay, you go ahead. Is there a story we, about how much was saved previously? We, we cannot I, read all, so you go ahead. You go ahead. Okay. Now, you see, he has a very easy job, which is to try and ask a lot of questions. Absolutely, it's necessary. May I? Please go ahead. But Thank mind you, you <laughs> we are using your time. I for agree, the but if you, if you so allow me, ahead. because the interventions also need to be please taken into okay. consideration. Please go but ahead. the point is that 1.9 billion CDs were saved in 21 months, and all he's trying to do this morning is raise issues and ask questions without any without any basis. 
without any basis whatsoever. He's just, you know, we, he's leading down a lot of ifs and, and maybes no, and all no, of that, which no, may no, not... Right. You'll no. you okay. get a chance to replace note. Okay, all right. And I'll go ahead. So that is factual. Now, to say that this NPP government in opposition was not being truthful, I'll refer you to Section 40 of Act 66, uh, 663, I believe, which is the Procurement Act. That says, spells out the specific conditions. And tell me, if the Bas branding saga, which was sole source, met those conditions, that was why we were complaining that the aberration had rather become the norm and we needed to pay attention to it. So it Coming didn't meet to, the, the sole source in, uh, Let them tell us. Criteria. Let them tell us. No, but if, in government, you should be able to tell us. You see, in my opinion, mm. and I'll tell so you that's this. your opinion. May is, I it, finish? is it a fact or it's an opinion? Huh? Listen. It is a fact okay. that it One did not... Doc, please uh, allow him. I, I don't want to interrupt because I, we're, okay. we're running out of time. Okay. Nana, please go ahead. It is a fact that it did not meet those processes okay. Okay. For, or those exceptional conditions for bus, ordinary brand, branding of a bus, which I can do today. Are people that, being sanctioned for it? Let, the NDC government was in power then. They, they should tell no, us what they did. but you are in government you are in government now. Yes, I am no, in Dr. government. Dr. Listen, you I'm are coming. taking over my job. This is my job. No, no, you see, it's, <laughs> no, it's I, taking no, too much I'm of the time. Do, there is a I it's because you are doing, it's it's because you are doing this I job. No, you are doing this job. That's why we are not You said they did not meet the... They didn't. So are people being sanctioned for it? Now, what I know is that the then government, took some actions, for example, by asking them, investigations were conducted the and then asking them to refund the money. Now, there's an issue of double jeopardy where if such some of these actions have been taken okay. before, then on the same set of facts, the government is limited by going back to take further action on the same issue because a previous action uh, government has done so. And it appears that that was the modus that operandi is. That was the modus operandi of, of the government of the day okay. for saving some of its appointees okay. on some of these things. Now, coming back to the IMF and, sorry, the EIU, and yes. it's instructive to know that this is the EIU. It is a prediction that has been made by the EIU. I think that a stitch in time says nine. They have, um, I do not know the basis upon which they are making these predictions. But I believe that... Um, you said the, the promises, government will be the tempted managers to spend. I like the word tempted. Right. So you can also resist a temptation. So let us not, uh, the clarity here is that they are not saying that definitely this is what will happen. What they are no. saying, there's a possibility that a budget overrun may, may, may occur. I believe that this, this, this morning, the managers of the economy will take note of it. I know they are very responsive to some of these things. And they will continue to monitor the situation and ensure that we achieve the economic stability that we have fought very hard for. I'm reading again from the IMF, and this is what it says. Quickly. Uh, IMF uh, lending case study in Ghana published in May 2019. And this is what it says. By 2019, Ghana's economy was in trouble, hobbled by widening current account budget deficits, rampant inflation, and a depreciating currency. Credit dried up as interest rates rose, and bad bank loans piled up. At the root of government woes was out of control government spending. That's the clarity there. At the root of government woes was out of control government spending. The same report on our end with what it says here that. Cuts to wasteful spending made room for much needed social services such as free secondary education. And it says this about the current government that at least uh, from 2017 to 2018, it has made such significant cuts and has ensured that the people of Ghana are getting the benefits from this. I believe that having done this to end such an enviable record, the managers of this economy are not going to throw it you know, out of the window all of a sudden because of an election. I do not believe Careful. So. Doc, that's a warning from uh, uh, EIU. I mean, the, the key thing for me is that even the fiscal responsibility law does not prescribe any sanction. So any uh, government can just decide to overspend and, 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 and walk away. Well, first of all, let's, let's, let's admit that this is a prediction or a projection. Mm. And so it is not born out of reality yet. And the better time to, or the proper time to discuss it is perhaps if we get there, and indeed, we had a budget overrun. Mm. But fundamentally, and it, of course, in principle, there is, in a sense, a problem. Because again, prior to 2016, one of the big campaign promises was what? This government was overspending, was, that is, the previous government was overspending, overspending, and so there was a need to cap spending somehow. And so we have the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Fine. It is instructive to know that the very government that passed this act 
is now being projected or assumed or speculated to possibly overrun it in 2020 when we get into the election year. And that is why I say we need to be cautious. But if that is the case, indeed, if there is, likely, there is a likelihood of spending 0.5% more beyond the cap, then there is a problem. And the problem is how much research and how much analysis had gone into the law, given that the very people who passed the law may have been the very first people to break it. As for the idea of there are no sanctions, it's a problem. We all know that there is a problem. I mean, how do you make, I mean, how, how do you make a law that does not really... The only sanction exact, is that Parliament could uh, remove the finance minister. Well, I mean, but and we know that Parliament <laughs> could do that in any day on several other issues. But mm. seriously speaking, we do know that the sanctions are the sanction that is very weak or there are no sanctions at all. The more important thing is, can we trust this government to stay within the limits of the, the law, the Fiscal Responsibility Act, going into 2020? Because I believe that it's a law that was passed in the best interest of the country. Mm. Can we trust this government? And then there was this question about um, prior to 2016, I mean, IMF report that Nana Jamal was reading government spending. Spending on what? What was the NDC government spending on? The evidence is there to see. Yes, we did spend, but the evidence is there. I mean, it is there in the hospitals. It is there in the schools. It is there in the roads, across all sectors, in various districts in the country. Some of those projects are not even being utilized, even though they have been completed, finished, and everything. So we will not run away from the fact that, yes, there was spending, but spending to benefit the people, spending to make sure that Ghanaians, Ghanaians have access to health care, Ghanaians have access to education, Ghanaian roads becomes motorable, making it possible for farmers to be able to have access to ready markets for their products. These kinds of spending cannot be described as wasteful spending. They were legitimate spending, and they will be legitimate spending any day. Mm -hmm. And so let us be circumspect how we basically describe spending as if it's a spending for party. The problem, though, is this. This current government is spending, and it is on the basis of the spending that these projections are being made. The fundamental question is, what are they spending on? What can we point to as the projects on which this current government is spending? I am sure that the first answer will be free SHS. Okay. Mm. Beyond that, is free SHS everything else? Is free SHS everything and anything one, that we one need village, in this country? One dam? Where are these? One district? One we have heard the minister himself say that what they are doing are no longer dams and that those things are basically dugouts because dams will cost more than those things. So oh, clearly, sorry. there are issues of sincerity credibility and honesty as far as those in whom we trust the management of this economy are concerned. And I think that it is important that we stay to the limits. Nobody will adhere to the, to, to the Fiscal Responsibility Act if the apostles of the act themselves violate it. And I agree. Let's hope and pray that we stay within the confines of it. I don't know whether we can tie this to the TUC's call. We can. Let's stay within the confines of the, the law. Now, if I may take the, the story on the, on the TUC, I think that there is a legitimate reason why TUC is making the call. And they are making the call because our debts is ballooning and our revenues are not improving. And there is a likelihood that we will move into serious distress as a nation. And when that happens, Usually, the easy route is what? To run to the IMF for a bailout and then also for IMF conditions. Mm. Now, when that happens, workers actually bear a huge part of the burden because then there are constraints on wages, there are even constraints on recruitment, and so on and so forth. And so the call by the TUC is important. What it, what it therefore means is that not, just, not only the government, but as a nation, we need to think more broadly about creative and innovative ways to rake in more revenue. And I believe that that is probably an alternative that we should look into. Now, you have one second. We're wrapping up the conversation. It's instructive to one know second, that... One minute. It's instructive to know that Dr. Pesawai says going to the IMF is the easy way out. So the NDC took the... When you are in trouble. That's yes, what so said. the NDC took the easy way out when they were in trouble. And 
admittedly went to carry all of these conditionalities onto the people of Ghana. Mm. And they knew that it was the easy way out. They knew it was going to have all of these effects on the people of Ghana. And they still mismanaged the economy for us to reach that point before we went there. And may I, may I, may I, may I, may I, may I, just one minute and then you also Now, you see, Here's my point. If it is about construction of matters, as individuals, we all have needs. Mm. So I should also decide today that I'm going to borrow or I'm going to borrow to the tune of my lifetime projected ends mm. and spend all of them today. And at the end of the day, that is it. You don't manage an economy like that. That's so if you, if, 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 if you feel that what you did is right, then why are you complaining about budget deficits today? Mm. If you think that there is a basis for what you did, the that, oh, oh, uh, oh. Doc, you, you're, you're wrapping up. Okay, so just right. hold on. Okay. Okay. Oh, please, oh, it's not please, helping us. Just go ahead please, and please wrap up. Thank you. Please wrap. <laughs> now, if you think that what you did was right by you know, contracting all of this, and it's very instructive to also note that, yes, the debt is rising because, you see, when you go into an arrangement for a loan, it is not all disbursed to you at once. Most of the loans that are being disbursed at this moment, mm. which are now becoming active, were contracted by the NDC. Most of these loans were contracted by the NDC in the year 2016. All of a sudden, as though Ghana you, needed you, to do... You have figures to suggest that most, I of have the, most of the loans? No problem at all. I'll give okay. you that data. Okay. I will give you that data and, and I'll make it available now. to you. But saying. the problem is that you do these things, you must manage the economy mm. and take the easy way out and run to the IMF in your own words imposing all of these conditionalities and difficulties on the people of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Another government came and managed to work out a plan such that Ghana is now out of the conditionalities that you said were imposed by the people of Ghana mm -hmm. and you said brought they hardship to the, the people of Ghana. Sorry, they were imposed by the IMF and brought hardships to the people of Ghana in your own words. And today you are saying that it is rather that government that has taken us out of the easy option that you chose. Oh my that yeah, should be hung that. for what you did. That is the scope of the political discussion. Should that we, we be worried that the IMF just last week warned us to be careful? It spoke you see, about revenue, uh, low revenue mobilization, the, uh, the uh, debt issue, the issue of the energy sector. It's, these were the challenges that led us to IMF. First and foremost, we were sent into the IMF based on a certain set of conditions that existed. They are given a justification that oh, they were using it to build hospitals among others. The loans that are maturing now, which we are dispersing now, were contracted by them. That's the first one. Secondly, this government has managed the economy in such a way that we've been taken out of the IMF. And I think that if you ask that, can we trust this government? Definitely. You should trust this government because okay. you took us there. There are two alternatives. One alternative took us there. They are admitting that it was the easy way out. It imposed difficulties on the people of Ghana, but they still went in for that. The other alternative has managed to work its way out and bring us out of Egypt. Today, yes, we are out of Egypt, but the, there is hunger. We are in the desert. That doesn't yeah, mean that we will not get to the promise. Okay, okay. another one I'm grateful. Thank you. Dr. Prasad, now yes. the time to wrap up. Thank you me. very much. You know, you can sit on the television set and engage in linguistic gymnastics, thinking that you twist words to. Uh, confused Ghanaians, but I think Ghanaians are more descending. This is not the first time Ghana has gone into the IMF. Ghana has started this program with the IMF in the 1980s. And every time we run into very, very serious difficulties, we do. The fundamental question is, is Ghana the only country that goes to the IMF? All over the world, all countries that are in difficulty. Greece, even European countries go to the IMF for support. So going to the IMF is not novel, it's not new, it's not limited to, it was not limited to Ghana alone under the, uh, the what do you call it? Out. Whether it was the easy way out or the most difficult way out, at the end of the day, the IMF helped to kind of what streamline things and get us to where we are now. You are, right? you are, you are, you uh, are, what do you call it? You guys are claiming to have managed the economy well, but you are riding on the back of the very policies that the NDC put in place before leaving government. Which brought us to the, the IMF. The but who says that going into the IMF was fundamentally fatal? It's the easy way out. But if it is the easy way out, I mean, why are you trying to make that an issue? If it, if it's the easy that's what you said. Don't oh, I thought, why? Go I ahead and make I your you point. Were so, prob you have problems with uh, interjections. So, so don't, 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 don't do you, react do you to, want to I won't get into this. Okay, so all right. Go okay. Right. <laughs> is it piercing? Just relax. The piercing ones are yet to come. I don't think so. I am saying that. I don't think so at all. Simple. Well, you say you have gotten out of the IMF. The IMF has started warning us. After, soon after you claim that you have made some great achievement. 
Indeed, if you have gotten us out of the IMF, and that is a great and the achievement, then kindly increase the wages of workers. Because that was one of the conditions that came with the, with the IMF. Indeed, if you have done that, then now let us see your revenue and get into the road construction, the hospitals That's and the schools, and let's see. And lead us back to because the Because in the end, nothing matters more in development than the provision of social amenities, the basis upon which individuals will strive, the economy will expand, and people will end decent living. Anything in, in the absence of this, then we basically don't even understand what development is at all. So let us not make the idea of NDC taking us to the island. In any case, when the NDC said, look, we want to have a national consensus on the economy. We are in difficulties. So we are organizing a forum at Senchi. We are inviting everybody to come. What did the MPP do? They decided to boycott it. They decided we to boycott come, it. That's why we went to the IMF. Sorry? Is that what you're saying? Because we didn't come, that's ah, why we went to the IMF. Okay, why you're rapping. Is now? that your statement? <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm No, no, I'm saying that they decided so to boycott the it. what's the relevance of that point? Very seasoned individuals met had discussions. The we consensus the was that end. we have to take certain measures. Now, let me explain this to Quickly. you. Quickly. <laughs> the measures that we had agreed upon at Senchi were the very measures that the IMF had also what suggested. Awesome. What was lacking, what was lacking Policy credibility. was what was called the credibility because at the end of the day... The whole government. <laughs> Doctor, so you go. At the end no, of the day, please, let him go. what you need, you need is that you need international uh, uh, investors to know that you have the backing of your creditors, which is the IMF and others. And that was all. But at the end of the day, it was a homegrown policy that was implemented. So let's be clear. What we need from this government is that we need the dams, we need the hospitals, we need the schools. We need the bridges. We need improvement in the wages and salaries of workers. These are fundamental. And anything in short of this, you are just... Uh, I am grateful. Michael, Dr. Michael, Dr. Michael Pesa White, uh, a member of the NDC, aspiring to lead the constituency of Sayo Sudo constituencies to Parliament. And Mo is a member of the NPP. Again, I'm grateful for your Friday Thank morning. Thank you very much. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. He's extending a handshake. And stay here.